everyone. Very excited to be with you today. Today from Help Systems, we're bringing you live performance navigator training, and we're going to talk more about the automated performance reporting and a few th other things in Performance Navigator. Uh, we will record today's event. We will have opportunity for a little Q&A at the end here. We got two of our experts standing by from Help Systems and uh, just really happy to be with you. We'll also have a couple polling questions along the way. So love for you to uh, participate in the polling questions. And if you do have any questions as we go, uh, we'll hold those questions until the end of the event and we'll do our best to answer. If we don't get back to everybody, I know um, we just don't like to leave any uh, stones unturned. So we'll make sure that we get back to you via email at a later point in time. So thank you again for joining us uh, on today's webinar. I'm Tom Huntington, longtime employee of Help Systems, a little over three decades, IBM Power Champion. I've uh, been working with Randy on and off throughout my entire career here at Help Systems as a colleague, partner, and just, just a good friend. So very excited to be with you today, Randy. What's your background with uh, Performance Navigator Help Systems? Yeah, as you said, I've, I've been in the industry uh, as long as you have. Uh, and like you said, we've known each other forever. Uh, and as most people on the, know on the phone, uh, we were acquired by Help Systems that's almost four years ago, Tom. So, uh, <laughs> It's been a, a long time, so yeah, we're, so now we're even working closer together, so it, it's, it's been a great ride, and I'm still happy to be here. Yeah, believe it or not, we're on Power 10 now. we got to worry about we that. We are. It's pretty cool. Um, and then Amber Upshaw. Amber, welcome uh, to the Help Systems uh, team and, and webinar today. How are you today, and what do you do for Help Systems? Right, thank you, Tom. Uh, so like I said, my name is Amber Upshaw. I've uh, been with Help Systems for a little bit over a year now. Uh, I'm a support rep for the robot products and for MPG. Um, so with Performance Navigator, I'll probably be the first person in support that you speak with. Awesome. Well, welcome, Amber. We look forward to sharing your expertise today, too. Here's our agenda for today. We're going to do just a quick overview of Performance Navigator. Uh, we can't assume that people know everything about what's in the product, so we'll do that and hopefully point out some new things along the way. Uh, Amber's going to cover main, maintaining Performance Navigator uh, using report sets. We'll do some live demos on both of those. Uh, Randy's going to help us out on group application jobs and setting that up, and then some of the automated daily, weekly, monthly reporting, and then along the way, Q&A. Hey, this is your event, so if you have some questions for us as we go and some things you want to see, we might even be able to break in and, and share with you that. So let me open up our first polling question we want to know how long you've been using Performance Navigator, and I guess your options are less than three months, so you're a newbie, about one year, so you got enough experience uh, to be dangerous, and then about two years and three or more years. We'll see if we got some long-time people with us, so it's looking like that thus far. That seems to be the, the biggest number, so it looks like we got some very, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, in-depth, knowledgeable people with us today on the product, Randy. Uh, is that kind of yeah. your experience? Yeah, that's great. I mean, we do have a lot of long-term users and, uh, you know, that's, what's great about that, Tom, is obviously we do get a lot of feedback because, you know, we don't have huge environments. And so, you know, that's how we get suggestions for upgrades and enhancements and so forth, because uh, we get a, a lot of great customers who have varying environments and give us a lot of feedback. Awesome. Well, here here we go. I'm going to share the results all to you. You see that 28% are less than three months, so we do have a good portion that's new. And then add eight with just one year or less experience, that's you know up to 36%. So nobody in that two-year bracket. So it's either they got a lot of experience or not much experience with Performance Navigator. Well, this is meant to uh, handle both areas, so we'll we'll do our best to make sure that we make this worthwhile for all involved. All right, so we're gonna talk, first of all, just a quick overview of Performance Navigator. Um, you know, both the GUI code and the OS or the operating system host code that come with Performance Navigator are free and you can load those on ahead of time and make sure that you got the flight recorder running. That's really the most critical part of it is that we wanna be able to collect all your partition data your BIOS, your Linux, your AIX, your IBM Ike. Uh, we want those collections running out there. 
as a customer basically with this free version of the Windows GUI. So you're gonna be installing a graphical interface on a Windows server or desktop. And with that, we're gonna give you some free graphs for CPU, some free disk space utilization. And we break each of those down monthly, weekly, date, time, you know, hourly kind of things. And then we also have the daily health check uh, from yesterday, an HTML version of that. And then this also gives us the ability at that point in time, if you don't know, we do a service, a paid for service for helping people do capacity planning with this product. So uh, Randy and, and team spent a lot of time helping business partners and customers uh, size their systems. And in reality, um, even IBM, uh, if, if you go directly to IBM, IBM TechLine is using that service to help size. So when you go to upgrade to Power 9 or Power 10, we'll be using that technology. Yeah, Tom, oh, I was going to say, yeah, uh, excuse me, I was just going to say that's probably even for long time customers, you know, there's a lot of uh, these days, every machine usually has multiple LPARs right. and they may only have a license for one or two like prod and, you know, backup or something, but they may have test and dev. It's it's extremely important, particularly in the capacity planning that you may do every, you know, one or two or three years that you have the data. And so it's it's the, the, the fact that the, collecting the data is free is probably the most unutilized feature, you know, because I, I often see capacity plans where we don't have that data because they just never knew and never installed it. So mm -hmm. it's important, at least from even if you don't look at it other than the free stuff you get, that you at least install this on every partition. That way you at least understand what the whole frame is doing. Right, because the historical information the flight recorder is what really helps us understand your footprint and your uniqueness. Now, no two systems are the same. They might have the same model number, same number of partitions, but certainly the workload is different. You know, and then from the GUI is where we also control the security codes and stuff for the product. So that's, you're doing that on the Windows side actually to, to license the full license version of the product, which I would guess that most of the customers that are with us today have that. So, um, so we use, um, when it comes down to performance collections, we're using with this product, the IBMI collection services. Uh, Go perform if you've ever been there. And then based on how you collect it, uh, we'll see people collecting uh, that performance data every five minutes or every 15 minutes. What Performance Navigator does then is uh, whether it's the Enmon data or the open source Enmon data from AIX, Vios and Linux and the IBMI data, we, want, we run a process either in cron in those unix linux environments or in the built-in scheduling tool shortly after midnight and we can have years of data for each of these partitions only taken up a gigabyte worth of data so people are often worried and one of the biggest things that people think about is performance data takes up a lot of space right well not if you have performance navigator running we can consolidate that. And so then this is used by IBM and its business partners for capacity planning. We're working with Arrow, we're working with uh, Tech Data, I can't think of their new name and Behringer, you know, so everybody around the, the, the world and then help systems, we provide capacity planning with this technology, problem determination and performance analysis. As however, many of you know, your customers and you're using the product on your own and doing your own reporting and stuff. and then. We also have MSPs that use the technology, managed service providers or cloud vendors for reporting and giving feedback to their customers. This is the graphical interface. I thought it would be good just to point out a few things on here. And if I miss anything, Randy, that's important, you, well, I'm sure I will miss something. You'll point it out. Um, we'll see, yeah. first of all, over here, I'm gonna get my little laser going here. Uh, over on the uh, IBM I uh, side, you'll see these different system names and blue represents IBM I. Green is AIX and Vios. We'll see those guys in there. Then we have Linux. We can certainly do Linux on power. You know, that's the crazy thing is, and I know we've been talking to many people for years, the tool could be used for doing comparison. What would it take to run Linux x86 workload on IBM power? Then we have different lines here. We got the historical reporting uh, metrics that we provide, the management reporting, that we provide in the product from Power Analytics. Problem determination, one of the really 
neat things is that Performance Navigator, you can let it just churn on the data and it will help identify the point in time where you had the spike or the issue so that you can then drill in and see where your problem is. And of course, then capacity planning for power, for IBM Power. We are the only tool on the planet that is automatically helping people do what if modeling, consolidating systems, taking parts of systems apart and breaking them up, you know, running AIX and IBM I together or Linux on the same frame, all different combinations, working them with the processor, you know, the PEP2 type technology, working with uh, different storage, SAN, internal, NVMe, all those things are used in the modeling, which makes the product very unique, but in some ways very complicated underneath the covers. So, Randy, anything to add there? Yeah, I was just going to say that's those four main, you know, rectangles there are sort of at the high level, all the, you know, functions we, we do. And, and you said some of them, um, there's a, a lot to that, but it, at a high level, that's sort of the, the idea of uh, the main functions that Performance Navigator provides, and a cert certainly there's a lot of links to get there, and we'll demo some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. So then we get into the historical data again. Just to tell you about you know, Performance Navigator on IBM I, one of the things that the product's been doing for years is kind of looking at your workload shifts um, and how the system's being used, kind of going with the idea that during the day you're running kind of more interactive web services, things like that. And then at night, traditionally on IBM I, we'll see a lot more batch activity. You may not be that. I mean, there's certainly complete storefront type business applications running on IBM I where it's all server-based stuff. It doesn't matter. You know, we're still gonna break things into kind of a first and second shift area. And then on the AIX Linux BIOS, we're doing 24 hour averages for the metrics and providing that. With the product, you get three levels. You get date, week, and month breakdown. And then, um, you know, performance me metrics by intervals. Uh, we kind of recommend you could have two years of data easily on IBM I, AIX, and Linux about one year. So you're thinking more from a uh, storage capacity usage standpoint, right, Randy, when we talk about uh, the number of intervals to have for those periods for IBM I and AIX. Yeah, correct. I mean, these uh, levels of history you know, we're, we're thinking about controlling out how much data we consume. And this is one of the ways, right? So the historical by date, by week, by month, you know, it's really, I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> yeah. So it, it is like two records a day, right? First shift, second shift. So per shift. So it's really not a lot of data. The interval data is, you know, more data, obviously, but that's <laughs> why we cut it off at two years and I'll be mine. It just, and these, by the way, are, you know, could be changeable. But that's these are all defaults that Those how we defaults. manage the storage, correct? Yeah, and then we get into job uh, on a, you know managing jobs on IBM I uh, monthly by you know for years we can do that and summarize that and then of course in Unix and Linux we're talking processes right and uh, there we we default to 90 days worth of uh, I'm sorry no I mean we we default to 90 days but that also includes um, you know data interval data for jobs for IBM I, AIX, Linux, and BIOS, so. Yeah, this really gets into profiling the resources consumed by every job, every user, every process. Yeah. Because that's how you can understand, you know, in capacity planning or growth-wise, you know, understand the workload and, you know, who's consuming what part of the machine, right? It's just having this historical data. Right, and then we get into navigating the GUI, coming back to it, there are different things you can do with the product. You'll notice across the top where you have the one, these are the various icons that you can click on uh, to move and get into different features of the product. Uh, we can click on the, the level view in the lower corner. This is where we switch to a date, week, monthly view on the data so that we got, you know, we can go from detail to, to summary type information by month. Uh, number three is we can right click on any of these dates on the bottom and we can drill down. So if I just simply hit the right click on my mouse, I can drill into, you know, July 19th right here if I wanted to. Uh, with option four, it's uh, with uh, arrow cursor right, and you can select to start the graph from here. So what that's going to do is allow you to say, let's now take our window 
and I want to look at the data from, say, maybe September 25th uh, into the most current data. So we have the ability to do that. And then five, we can scope line at the top. We can slide this again, kind of a similar process of collapsing the data. And then with six, you can drag the left or right side um, below the x-axis and, and move things around. Uh, any other tips here, Randy? Yeah, well, one other tip is we have a lot of longtime customers here. I can see uh, a lot of familiar names. Uh, there is a, what we call it a cutoff date. So even though you have years of data, let's say you have five years of data, and you can trend on that data and, and, and so forth, but maybe on a regular basis, you don't want to look at it. You know, it's still there. We're not going to remove it. But you can actually, from the graphical GUI, you can say, I, we call it a cutoff date. So you can say, I, I only want to look from January of 2021. So like a year in, the, in like 14 months in this case. Okay. Right? So there's a that's another option under under edit uh, system option and dates. So that way you don't have to, when you come in, you don't have to zoom as much because you've already you know sort of cut it off. So you don't have to zoom in and out as much. Sure, you've set your starting point. Yeah, okay. Correct. So then, you know, we also have the metrics are coming out of the the system. So when we talk IBMI, of course, we have the MPG live on your system, and Amber's going to be showing you a little on that. And then we use the collection services data, and that's the piece where you know we keep harvesting that data so that that stays consistent. And that's the piece without MPG or without Performance Navigator, that's where that grows, and people go, "Oh my God, we got to get rid of all this storage that Performance Collection data is using." If you're running our host code, we're going to maintain that for you. We're going to keep that at a steady, consistent level. And the same would be true for the AIX Linux and BIOS area. In this case, though, we're using Topaz or Enmon data, preferably Enmon data. Um, and then, of course, uh, we also have metrics for Power VM, you know, for the virtualized, capped, uncapped, uh, shared resources, basically, that you're using. Uh, we also have hardware me metrics for CPU and memory disk and the network um, providing all that information and then operating system type metrics, you know, things like the jobs, the processes, the subsystems, and you're able to report and group things by that. And then in the storage area, library object IFS, and then of course file systems. Again, if we're out in the Unix and Linux world, we can, and disk configurations, we can share that information. All right. Yeah. Well, I know. Yeah, go ahead. You want to? Add I was going to say, there? Tom. I was going to add one more thing uh, on the Power VM metrics. Make yep. sure that everybody goes on the HMC in the profile in the advanced section. There's a little checkbox that says Enable Performance Collection. By default, that little box is unchecked. It should be checked. There's no downside, and it does allow collection services to collect things like virtual pools and and that kind of thing. So if you don't have that box checked, some of this data may be blank. And that's because that box is not checked. So, so that's a, a reminder. Thing we don't turn on automatically because we can't, it requires the customer to go into the HMC to do that. Correct, under the profile, under the advanced tab, and just uh, check that little allow performance collection box. All right, so we got a lot of familiar faces out there. Make sure that you're doing that. Very good tip, Randy. All right, well, we're um, now off to talk about maintaining Performance Navigator, and Amber, over to you to talk towards this slide. Okay, thank you, Tom. So uh, when it comes to uh, updates for PerfNav, we usually do a couple each year, um, and like Tom mentioned earlier, uh, Power 10, uh, we have an update for that, and also for new OS levels as well. Um, you can download these new versions uh, on the customer portal, and we also have a way to get to it via the PerfNav GUI. Um, and if you could, Tom, I'm ready to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, I'll make you presenter, Amber. You know, the other thing to think about too is out on our website, there are release notes. And from that, as Amber brings up her screen here, you can see what's new or you can track that area. So, um, Okay. Here we go. Awesome. All right. Okay, so from the community portal, uh, you'll go up to downloads and then go to my downloads, and it'll bring you to this page. Um, Performance Navigator is under the robot product brand, so we're going to select robot apply, and then it'll take you to put the list of robot products, and then you're going to go ahead and click 
on Performance Navigator. And it'll take you to this page. And like Tom just mentioned, we have release notes. Uh, we have instructions on installing the host code for IBMI and Linux. Uh, we also have instructions on installing the GUI as well. And here you have at the bottom the host code, the GUI download, and the host code for AIX and Linux. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to give you a little walkthrough on installing our host code. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you can do it through the GUI. You go up to File, Install PM400 on Host, and I already have it installed, but so it'll start you here at zero. And this gives you like a summary of the steps that you're gonna take. And what you'll do is go through each tab here. You'll, after you downloaded the save file from the portal, you'll go here and browse for that file and then go to the next step. And we make it pretty easy. So you see, we have a command create save file command, which what it does is take that command, adds it to the clipboard and you can pull up this system you're setting up like this and just do a simple paste. So minimize that. So then the next step you'll do a FTP. Um, if you don't already have the system name saved here, you can just enter an IP address. You'll enter in your username and password for that system and then select this FTP, FTP button. And then in the box below, you'll once it's done, you'll have a connection successful message. Um, if this doesn't work, we do also have uh, instructions for manually FTPing the file over to the iSeries, but, uh, and that's only if, uh, we only have that happen if you're using a, a port that isn't a typical port for FTP. Uh, then you'll go over and do the same thing on the fourth tab, uh, and it'll, it'll copy this over to the clipboard as well. You'll run that command, and then the last command to install, the same thing. It'll copy that command over to the clipboard, and you'll paste it into, into a command line. And once it's done, you should see. I'm going to go over. You are doing a great job of navigating all this stuff, Amber. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. A green screen, a GUI, and a web going. Well, she is. <laughs> so, so once, yeah, I was going to say, ahead. while she's setting this up, because as you notice, Amber, was, you know, we put that in your clipboard. So when you're doing this, you can install this on as many IBM I partitions as you have GUI, you know, 5250 sessions open. So I've had customers do, you know, five, six, seven at once, you know, because it's a cut, you know, it's a paste enter, paste enter, paste enter, paste enter. So we try to make it as easy as you can to do as mul multiple of these as you can. Okay. So once you're done installing, you should be able to, let me F12. So you should be able to access our menu now. So you'll do a go, ECG Live, PerfNav. And then the first thing you should check and see if our, our jobs are scheduled and that will be through option five. Uh, and this should be what you see. Uh, the most important job here would be this PerfNav DR job. This is what gets us all of the data for our graph. So we wanna make sure that this job is uh, scheduled. It usually runs every day at uh, 1230 in the morning. Um, and then the next thing we wanna check here is option seven, your PerfNav status. So this is the window you should see as well once you've done an install. Uh, performance data library should be QPFR data. Uh, if you installed the current version of our host code, you should be at 19.2a. Uh, and if you haven't ran the job, disregard this, but if you've already run the job, this should be current date or the day before. Uh, and this also should be reflect the same thing as well. And of course, your system name. Yeah. And you know, so you can see here we're what reducing uh, over two years worth of data. Yeah. And do you see that special date, which was yesterday? Yeah. yeah. To do to do to do to do to Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. And that's all I have, Tom. I was going to add. I was going to add, Tom, uh, for the next release for all you customers on the on the webinar here who also have robots scheduled. 
the, it will check to see if it's there. And if it is, we are going to put those jobs on your robot scheduler instead of the default IBM I scheduler. And if you don't, we're going to put it on the default schedule. Got it. That's on the, that's right. on the next release. So just be looking out if you upgrade and don't be surprised if on the the uh, they show up in the robot scheduler uh, list versus the uh, default scheduler. Awesome. OK, so uh, you should all be seeing my next screen here. Let's talk uh, report sets and get into a little bit deeper into the product here and automation for report management. Uh, Randy, I think this is over to you. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you on the phone, but maybe some of the, the new ones on the that have just played around with it for a little bit. Report sets is our mechanism to automate the uh, production of reports. So, you know, obviously as admin people or technical people, we can certainly navigate the GUI to look at what we ever we want to look at, right? But ultimately one of the features as you saw is management reporting. And we would certainly want to automate that process, right? And the way we do that is with report sets, right? So it, it is the mechanism where we either produce graphs, you can, you know, numbers of graphs or power analytics. Now, everything under power analytics menu generates HTML. So that those are more obviously uh, management friendly, management formatted style reports, right? So it's either you can choose you know, either graphs or uh, power analytics stuff, right? Now, if you think about when you automate things, you now have to think about, because we got a lot of history, right? So you have to think about the time frame. So when I want to create a graph every day, every week, every month, you know, whatever time frame, then it's whatever metric, let's say, you need to think about, well, do I want to graph by date, by week, by month, you know, average days and so forth, right? So just be thinking about those things and you should get familiar with that, you know, manually doing it, right? Oh, I like this graph, so, you know, what level is it and so forth. Um, when you when you save it, you can certainly save it as a JPEG. You could save it as a bitmap, which most people don't do. You could save it as a CSV file. If you have, uh, we have customers who also have a lot of Windows machines and a lot of, they want to put this data over to some other consolidated you know, enterprise tracking system. And most of those can't take in uh, CSVs. So you could actually, instead of saving the graph, uh, CPU utilization, for example, you could save it as a CSV. Uh, and as I mentioned, the power analytics stuff is all HTML, right? And the other thing is, is you're gonna save, you're gonna where to save, that's the other decision to think about, right? You're gonna save this to where, to a shared drive or uh, an NSF mount or a web server, wherever somebody needs to get access to it, right? Whoever the target is like management or the other team members or whatever, right? Um, now there is a default save directory. And of course a report set will override and we call that the global directory and it'll save it to wherever you wanna save it. So just think about where I'm gonna put all this stuff once I create it, right? Uh, if you print it, um, you know, print it as a landscape uh, and, you know, with number of graphs per page, you could say, I want to have two graphs per page. Uh, we don't see many people doing that, but you could do that. We do have people emailing this. Let's say they're going to email two or three graphs. Um, and it does, you can only email graphs. Um, we've had customers who try to email power analytics but that gets complicated because it's html which then has jpeg pointers and you'd be emailing a lot of stuff if you tried that so that's why we don't let you do emails with power analytics because it's it's, it's a lot of data to be emailing right uh and if you're going to do it you have to tell us where the smtp is configured and that's real easy right the ip address and, and the user id and so forth right um there are variables so some graphs, as you know, like like uh, ASPs, right? If you have multiple ASPs, so I'm going to create a disk space for AS, you know, SysBase and AS33 or AS2 or so forth. So we can, you just tell us I want that graph, but I, you, you tell us to do it multiple times, create 
create this graph for SysBase, create this graph for ASP2, and then create this graph for AS33. So you don't have to, there's some selection parameters when you create these uh, report sets, right? Now, once you've done that, you could say, I want to do this over multiple systems. I want to do this over the three production systems. So you don't have to run the report set three times. You just run it once and tell us to do it over these three systems. Um, scripts, uh, again, you can run that. Uh, uh, most of those are run under the Power Linux SIP, and we'll show you that when we get into the demo. And so with a report set, you give it a name, and we recommend that you make it simple. Um, don't make it complicated. You know, I mean, we do support spaces and stuff like that, but uh, I would keep it as simple. And uh, then you can, when you create these things, you can create them, you can copy them, you can save them, you can delete them, and you can have as many of these as you want. Uh, I saw one customer who must have had 75 of these things. Um, and we actually, for the, the latest release, uh, we actually, for the first time, we actually shipped four predefined report sets. Uh, and we've labeled them PM400. And as we did that because as most people on this maybe know that this, that, that, that was the old service where IBM used to send you some reports or you used to go to a website. Well, that ended a year and a half ago. So that's sort of why we can do the same data, right? So, uh, so that's why we labeled them PM400. And it's a health check. Uh, a monthly interactive one, a monthly non-interactive, and for AIX, it's a monthly performance summary. So we just created these four sort of as examples uh, of predefined report sets that are shipped with it. And so now the question is, how do you automate this, right? And you do this through the Windows Task Manager or through Robot Scheduler Enterprise, which is help systems uh, enterprise which does can automate you know jobs on windows servers and linux and you know ibmi and so forth so uh and the way you do that is that example right below you would in like the task manager you would say uh you're going to run perfnav.exe and it's space and you're going to say save print or email and most likely you're going to be saving this and the name of the report set so the example below there is what the entry in the uh, task manager would be to create the health check. And you say, I want you to do that, the daily health check. So I want you to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and run that. And when everybody gets in, that will all be ready to go. So then there's re there's also a reports drops drop down. And you know, reports obviously look like a spreadsheet. If I'm sure most people have seen them, right? But they're what I call interactive reports because just like an Excel spreadsheet, which it kind of looks like, you can sort them, you can rearrange them, you can add them up, you can do lots of things with them. Uh, you can actually graph data from them, right? Uh, and we'll show you this, but there's monthly summaries. Uh, we, we do track, as uh, Tom mentioned, you know, libraries and objects and IFS and stuff like this. And we can let you get at your hardware, uh, sort of like a display hardware description. Uh, maybe a little easier because it's in a spreadsheet. You can sort it and delete it and remove stuff, uh, so forth. Do daily summaries. You can do system activities, which is sort of like a work act job, work this status command. Uh, and you can select dates and so forth. Again, it was mentioned under Power Analytics. Uh, the this is all the HTML and you know management level, and you I'm sure most of you may have seen it. They sort of have all the same look and feel, but there's the daily help check, and we'll show you some of this in a second. Uh, you could use a, and this is depends on how like a daily help check is pretty high level, right? It's like one page, right? But let's say you want more detail. The the prior day performance summary is analyzing the same data as the health check, except instead of one page, it's like 12 pages. So it's, we're just peeling the onion back and giving people more information, right? And it depends on how deep you want uh, and go there. The enterprise performance overview, that's uh, what the next two reports, one of my two favorite reports, especially when you're looking at when you have lots of machines and lots of LPARs, this sort of puts it in a very uh, easy user 
you know, format to see, well, how much hardware do I have? And at a monthly level, how is it looking performance wise? And this gets into configuration. So this is what I use all the time, particularly with capacity planning in tuning and or tuning. Is my, is my enterprise tuned the best? Are the resources configured correctly and so forth? So this is usually where I start was with those two things. And we can do analysis for your disk, like which libraries are growing, you know, trying to answer the question, why is my disk growing? And it does both for libraries and IFS. Um, we do the job analysis, because remember we track every job and every user in terms of resource consumption. So we're doing, you know, big data analytics, if you think about it, and we're analyzing that data to come up with the top 10, you know, jobs or ODBC and so forth. So uh, that's, even though the data is there, we try to help you with, you know, doing the 80-20 rule. Let's look at the jobs that are consuming the most and then work our way down to, you know, see about other jobs and so forth. All right, thanks Randy for running through those. Let's go back to Amber and have her demonstrate how to set up a report set here and looking, yeah. Okay, Tom, can you, okay. Yep, perfect. So, all right, here we go. So we're back in the GUI. Uh, so to create the report set, we're gonna go to edit, then report sets. All right, and here are those four report sets. Well, yeah, four report sets that Randy mentioned earlier. Um, so what you would do here is just do new and you can type out whatever name you uh, choose. Uh, definitely keep it simple. Um, for sake of the demo, I created one beforehand called web test. Uh, and here you, in this graph tab, you would select any amount of graphs you, graphs you want to include on your report set. Here, I just included the CPU milliseconds used by date. Uh, then you go over to your next tab, parameters. Uh, here you can choose a time frame. So if I have it set to use a date range, but you can uncheck that and it'll just give you this uh, default time for your graph, time frame for your graph. Um, you can also select uh, the different shifts and you can also make some changes here under the, to make it by time or by date for units as well. Uh, over on the save, you can choose the file type, uh, the dimensions for the image, for the graph, and also your output directory. Randy mentioned uh, before that you can save it to a network drive. So here I have the default, but you can change that to whatever path you'd like. Uh, print, again, uh, the orientation or how many graphs you want per page. Uh, miscellaneous, here you can set up a subtitle for your graph, uh, show it in pie chart, show guidelines, uh, have the value set up as a bar graph, et cetera. And here is the email tab where he mentioned you can set it up to, you also have to have SMTP configured, but you can set it up to where the report set is emailed out as well. Uh, graph selection parameters, again, you can, filter these graphs by job, by user ID, by uh, ethernet line name. Uh, for sake of the demo, I'm not gonna select anything. Uh, then next you would have your pre-select systems. You can select as many systems as you want um, that you have connected connection to. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna select one. And the scripts tab. This is what Randy mentioned for those power analytics power analytics report. Uh, this is where these will be stored. As a note, um, when you're creating your report sets, you cannot have a report set that includes graphs and scripts. You have to either have a report set for one or the other. Um, so now, once you're done completing your report set, you'll go ahead and hit save, and then OK to exit out. Um, before actually running your report set, I would suggest doing a, a preview of it. So you would go to file, report set production, and then preview. And here you see I have the report set that I created, web test, I'm gonna select that and give a few moments. And here we have a preview of that graph. Uh, in order to get it to where you can send it out, you go to back to file, report set production, 
save to disk. Again, select that report set I created. And I'm going to give it a little time to run. And then it's going to, wherever you decide to save it, but here is the directory I chose to save it in. And here you can see I have my graph. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. So appreciate that. Let's uh, keep moving along as we get a little more advanced. And of course, uh, want to make sure we keep moving because I don't want to run out of time either. We got a lot of other group of areas to talk about. We want to get into groups, grouping of things. We figure that some of you want to be able to say, hey, I want to look at my web application. I want to look at my ERP system data and jobs. And this is where the group feature comes into play, right, Randy? Yeah, correct. So again, it's great that we have all this history, but again, we need to sometimes group this so we can, you know, I use this a lot, particularly in capacity planning. Um, so users and jobs. So for example, if you want to know what a particular application is doing to your system as a whole, right? Like your, like your web application, right? There may be three web servers and a bunch of other jobs. You could group all those together to see this is what this application is doing to this machine, right? Um, and so that's, you could group things by job, by user. I group things by system a lot uh, because I'm doing capacity plans. You know, I'm doing server consolidation and how many, I'm going to group this, these systems and so forth. So maybe the best thing to do is like uh, Tom was saying, we'll just give you, kind of show you. So, uh, and as you saw with the Amber, you know, there's, there is a lot of systems here, right? And if I go to edit, and this is how you can create a group. And this is one way you can actually dynamically, and I'll show you here in a second, but as you can see, there's a graph by you. I, currently, I don't have any graph by users or jobs because I do lots of capacity plan. I have lots of, you know, jobs by system. So I have, you know, like that Phoenix, there's the, that one and uh, LNT, there's a bunch of there. And so you can see that I've grouped those. So I'll show you sort of how that works once you've grouped them. So you can actually get a report, a monthly report by jobs, and you can actually say, I want you to go through and give me a monthly summary of the resources consumed by that group, by all the groups. So that would give you a list of all of the groups that I've defined, or you could just say all job. That's one way to do that. You could come over here and say, uh, I want to right click. And when you right click on any job name in your system name, you have a lot of options. Well, here's a bunch of groups. So you could add this partition to a group if you wanted to. You could select a group, like I'm going to select LNT, and you can say I just selected 16 systems. And so I do this when, you know, if I'm going to do a report on it, for example, enterprise performance overview. So anytime you see the word enterprise, like under power analytics, management, reporting, and you see enterprise, we're really talking about what you've highlighted over here. So if I only wanted an enterprise report for let's say an application, uh, and let's say, uh, let's say JD Edwards, and you have three partitions running JD Edwards, and you're gonna give that to the JD Edwards development team, or, or you know, you could say, here's what your resources are, are consuming, so, so forth. So really, technically, we're gonna give you a list of everything that's highlighted here. Uh, and you can see, <clears throat> we mentioned the performance overview and the hardware summary overview. Um, we also mentioned, uh, you know, the health check, and I think we'll show that that here in a second. But this is basically the grouping option, so you can actually create it here and manage them, like she was saying. That you can create a group, add a group, verify a group. If we have any MSPs in the attendance here, we have a. You can actually report on your customers. So this is different. So this is like I have. Let's say I have connected. I'm an MSP. I got five customers and I got 100 LPARs connected to my client. I want to group those by customers. And customer A has three machines and 10 LPARs across three machines. So you could do that to create reports just for that customer. So you could do data centers. These LPARs are in this data center and these LPARs are in that data center. So, and this gets into some of our dashboard and creating stuff uh, that we have in, in the, um, function in the product. So this is sort of how you can manage them manually, or as you saw here, you can 
uh, add or subtract or do things like this over here in this right clicking on it. All right, Tom. Awesome. That's, you know, that's really good. I mean, you mentioned JD Edwards. I've seen uh, you do some things on HA solutions. Uh, maybe you're running payroll and it's Kronos or other things on IBM I, some of the in four applications. You know, that's the purpose of that. Or maybe you have a web service too and you want to build something there too. So all, all good tips, Randy. Appreciate that. Um, we'll take back presenter control here. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's uh, move into automation of daily, weekly, monthly reporting using Power Analytics. And um, Randy, uh, probably keep this part short and get into the demo. Yeah, you got it. Uh, again, it's it's like automating that HTML uh, logic here. And, you know, this is where a lot of our customers, I'm going to say, vast majority of our customers, they're going to do at least this part, right? Um, and, and get this data that a lot of it's very technical. And again, we try to put this into a management you know, format, so to speak. And again, you can manually do it or automatically do it and so forth. So why don't we just get me, I'll go back over to the demo, Tom, and yeah. we'll just show you real quick. Let you go on here, buddy. Here you go. You there we go. Be. All right. So again, under power analytics, uh, you know, management summary is, you know, as you see, here's the daily health check. This is the in the non-interactive. The, the difference is this one has response time in it. This one does not. You could do a weekly one. You can do the prior day, which is again more detail. And if you've already seen some of this uh, enterprise data, you can get into core analysis and disk space analysis and disk performance analysis. This is really interesting when you have a, a, a pretty large uh, uh, you know, number of LPARs and so forth. Right? You can look at frame resource and they all generate HTML. So I ran a health check and this is something that we do keep track of the less, I think 20 of these things. And you can see this is by default where they're going to go. This is, so this is the global directory I was talking about. But again, if you run a report set, you can put these anywhere you want. So right before today, I ran, this is one of our systems. I ran a health check for yesterday. Uh, I should keep that for, you know, prosperity's sake. <laughs> um, and you can see it, you know, what the average CPU and, and you can see these are best practice guidelines. So you can say we actually quote exceeded the best practice guideline. And th these are the peak CPU. So the average, and these are all hot links, by the way. So if you click on this, you're going to see a graph and you can see when it happens, right? So that's the next logical question. I, at one point yesterday, I hit 75. 0.4% busy, and when was that? That was 2.45 in the morning. So maybe that's a bad thing, maybe that's an okay thing, because maybe that's when we're doing backups and so forth, right? This is my disk. Uh, at one point, my disk arm busy was exceeding best practice guidelines, and if I want to know when, it well, guess what? It's 2.45, and it's probably when we're doing a backup, right? <laughs> so that is, uh, this is, and, and again, faulting, same kind of thing. We're approaching a guideline. There's an example of the yellow and we're exceeded in. Um, and by the way, these we do have guidelines that are all defaulted, but you can change these guidelines in the GUI. So if you want to, I can show you real quick where that is, but you can actually change these guidelines if your installation is a little different. Uh, and we do, this is a two page report. We do tell you what this machine looks like you know, from a hardware standpoint. So, you know, there's a, a lot, there's 20 partitions on this machine and, you know, this happens to be partition number 21 and, you know, the virtuals and we tell you about how it's configured and so forth that kind of help you interpret this. So, but you can see the look and feel here. The other thing I wanted to point out, Tom, is that you'll notice this is the help system logo and that's sort of the color. You can change this. You can actually put your company's logo here and you can change that background color to whatever your company colors are. So if anybody's interested in that, we can certainly uh, get with uh, uh, Amber or myself or send in a support. We can certainly let you know how to do that. So that's uh, an example there.
and again, so the other things like desk library analysis. So remember, we do track all so your libraries. So we have that exact and question out here, Randy. Why is my but, disk growing? Right, and you can say now, and we're going to analyze today, right? And so we're going to say, and and you can do it this way, or usually when your disk is growing like right now, it's usually temporary storage. And then the question is, is what job is consuming temporary storage, right? This, this customer also, is at 80%. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if you do this, what you really want is 80%, you want to do this over time. Mm -hmm. So I would start with library. So you could say, why is my disk growing over library? And it says, it's, it's telling you here, and when you run a script, by the way, you'll get these questions uh, asked, right? It says it's going to run, a, we're going to run an analysis over that, right? And so it may take a few minutes and just say, hit the OK button. And it's going to take off here. And so it's saying, I'm going to look at the current before and after date. So that's the key. When you're doing this, why is my disk growing? You have to pick a before date and an after date. And so far, that's, uh, you know, those two dates. And I'm going to say no, just so I can show you. And now it's telling me to pick the before date, right? So I'm right clicking on the date. And I'm going to set that to the, let me get my WebEx thing out of the way here. I'm going to set that date to the before date. And I'm going to set the last date to the after date. And so when it asks you a question, a script, you'll see this little script icon. It's actually on both ends. That is the continue script button. So when you run a script, it asks you a question. You just hit this to continue. So I changed the before and after date. So now when you run these scripts manually, you'll see that the screen is flashing because this is where we've done the automation. So you can see this is a one page here for a period of, you know, 7, 11, 7 to 23. There were four new top libraries. So this is a top analysis. So Chuck 2, Chuck 5, Chuck 3, and <laughs> yeah, and test, we all know. Test. Yeah, yeah, test, yeah. right. So. He's, this is one of our you know, POCs and testing machines. So those libraries did not make the top 50 list in 120, uh, uh, November. And now they're in the top 20, right? There were Got six it. libraries that grew more than 20%. And we list them here. So this is the high level, but if you, and there was two libraries that grew more than 50%. And then if you come down, so if you think about it, this is the top, 50 libraries on 11.7, whatever that date was. And this is the size, the percent of disk, and how many objects. This is the top libraries as of this date. So you can see this library actually grew, you know, uh, 224%. And this one grew like 1%, but it's it's the number of objects, right? So in these, like Chuck 2, 5, and 3 didn't even make the top 50. Sure. Before. So this is a real great way of sort of really answer what's causing my disk to grow. And this is the automated part, analytics part of this. Now we could do the same thing for uh, objects. We can do the same thing for directories. We can do the same thing for IFS, uh, uh, your okay. IFS directories and stream files. So Randy, looking at time, we probably have to pop out of this one here. And then you bet. Okay. Sorry to do that. I know you could. we could spend all day in, in going through all the different reports. That's probably part of the part of the challenge, right? So let's, um, all right, very good. Let's move out of that. And um, so hopefully you saw a lot today. We're going to get into the Q&A here in a little bit. And um, we appreciate you uh, being with us today to see how to navigate Performance Navigator, look at report sets, grouping, and then how to use the automated reporting. Um, we do have one more uh, polling question for you here, and let me find the polling questions. And we just want to be able to help you out if uh, you find that you need capacity planning services for your next hardware purchase or upgrade, or you're just wondering you uh, how your system is put together, or you maxing things out. Uh, we certainly do services around your performance and can help you out further with that. Uh, problem determination, we also do a lot of problem determination for customers when it comes to performance issues. 
uh, certainly we can help you out there. Um, switching gears, I know security is always on everybody's mind. Uh, we do a lot of free security scans for customers and helping them better understand their security. We also have a lot of HADR discussions these days too, as uh, we uh, have Robot HA and Power HA, and we do a lot of discussions around that for customers. And of course, if there's any processes that you need help automating, maybe it's this reporting. Uh, Randy can help you out with that, or Amber can help you out with that through services uh, too to train you on those areas. Um, you know, just recently helped somebody with the Robot Schedule Enterprise piece. So Randy, why we leaving that open? Uh, Amber, Randy, we had a lot of great questions out there. Uh, Jose is wondering, is all object authority required in order to run Performance Navigator? No, all you really need is access to MPG Lab and um, QPFR data. Uh, and enough, because we do do override database file commands, so enough authority to run that one command. Yeah. So as long as you have that, then you, you that's all really the quote the authority you need. Correct, correct. Um, is the information consolidated across multiple LPARs? I think you sh showed that, but maybe expand upon that. Yes. Yeah, so any one of these graphs. So for example, like this one. Uh, now I don't know. You could actually click this little bar right here, which is the all LPAR button. Oh, we're not seeing and, your screen right now. Oh, right yeah, now. we're not seeing. There's an all let LPAR. Me, but, let me make you presenter because that way it's a good way okay. to answer some of these questions. Yeah, so. okay, sure. Uh, so there's this all LPAR icon. And the thing to think about here is you, if you have a graph that's got four or five metrics on it, if you click that, it's going to get, as you can see, I'm going to say messy. Let's say you have 10 LPARs and you got five metrics. Well, that's 50 things you're graphing. So I like to keep it simple. Like in this case, it's one metric you know, utilization. So if you click this, we already know what serial number that is. And we're, you don't have to highlight them because we know we're going to go through all your LPARs and we're going to create a side-by-side -side graph of all of your disks for all of your frames. So that is one of the unique things that Performance Navigator does yeah. is that we can graph this by virtual shared pool, right? Over here, virtual shared pool, or we can graph by the whole frame. Mm -hmm. So it's not about just managing your, you know, LPAR. It is about managing ultimately your whole frame, which mm -hmm. I again gets into capacity planning and so forth. Randy, can you get CPU usage for an entire week on one screen? Sure. Yep. And let's say what depends on, you know, uh no you have to see, have the data see, I highlighted the, <laughs> see right there was an example i highlighted a bunch and it said hey do you want to have this graph on all of them so by the way this is a week but if i want to go by date as you saw me do there and if you wanted to do this you can automate this by the way but if i wanted to do this and you can see down here that i'm going to start right there monday and let's see i'm going to start graph here and that's the that's a so that's week. more than a week obviously yeah but that's a week oh there's the week okay sure yep and so you can actually tell us to automate we produce that every week if you want monday through friday right perfect i think hopefully that answers john's questions nate's giving us a hard time he says it might be the performance data files that are growing your disk space in use but Reality is we we take and, and collect that performance data and that shouldn't be your problem. That should stay very consistent. Is that true? I that think, is right? true. So by default, collection services only keeps 10 days of those QAPM files. And that's the big part of that by default. Yeah. People can change that with Performance Navigator. There's really I, I use that 10 days in problem determination, right? So one thing to remember, we also have a GUI interface to all of those QAPM files. So everything except current day above this and below this is accessing MPG Lab. Everything mm. under current day is a graphical interface over that raw performance data. Got it. Got and it. And you can go back 10 days by default, but if you wanted to have be able to go back, you know, 30 days, just you can go into go perform and change that. But in reality, most people keep it at 10 because you know our historical data is going to usually answer your questions about you know who's chewing my machine up and what's causing it and so forth so we have a password question in here how to change the password in the gui 
my password. Great question. Changed. And I was going to mention that when Amber was talking about automation. So when you automate something through a the GUI, through the Windows Task Manager, yeah, we're going to have to log in, right? So you can come over here to System Options and Password. So this is where you can actually, we can save your password, a user ID and password. We do encrypt it. So on your P, it's a file on your PC, but it's encrypted. The password is. But what we recommend is you create a PerfNav ID and a password that does not expire. In today's security world, that's usually the issue. People want to renew their passwords. Sure. So we tell people to create a PerfNav ID that a password that doesn't expire. Tell the that that ID cannot log in and it only has access to those two libraries. So usually that satisfies the security team that this password, this ID cannot log in and it can only have access to MPG Lime and QPFR data. Got it. And that's in that way you could save it and that way you don't have to worry about passwords expiring and so forth. So that'd be our recommendation, but it's under edit system options and password. Very good, very good. Well, um, that's awesome, Randy and Amber. I think uh, we're, we're basically at the end here. We've gone through most of the questions. I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. A lot of information we went through. We thank you for at least looking at help systems, if not already being a help systems customer. Uh, great job, Amber, and great job, okay. Randy. You too, Tom, and good luck. And we'll get back to the people that you know had some other questions that we didn't have a chance to answer and uh, follow up on anybody that was looking for further services. All right, thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. All right, All right. You take care.